boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Despite Amazon's constant, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, constant gloating about how Rings of Power is their most successful original series that they ever made. Uh, according to IndieWire here, only 37% of US Lord of the Rings Rings of Power viewers finished season one. Amazon has previously called the show its top original, having been viewed by over 100 million people worldwide. Now let's dig into this a little bit and we'll, and we'll circle back to the, um, and we'll circle back to the viewed by over 100 million people worldwide. Uh, since its premiere last September, September 2022 is when Rings of Power came out. Lord of the Rings, Rings of Power has been proudly branded a hit by Amazon. Prime Video proclaimed that the fantasy series premiere date broke records for the stream of 25 million viewers tuning in. As of March, March 2023, Amazon has been calling, calling it their biggest show ever with over 100 million people worldwide having watched the series. But streaming ratings are always nebulous and a new report Report is calling the show's success into question. So wait, you mean Amazon? You mean the ratings for an Amazon original show, as reported by Amazon themselves, may not be entirely accurate? Who? Imagine my fucking shock! Right? Who honestly thought that Amazon was going to be honest about 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 their ratings? I certainly wasn't. I honestly hope that you didn't think that either. Anyway, in the United States, only 37% of viewers who started The Rings of Power actually watched all eight episodes to completion, according to a new report from The Hollywood Reporter. The number was not shared directly from Amazon, but reportedly came from sources within the organization. And given that this is being pulled from The Hollywood Reporter, I can believe, I, I can believe that, that they're that their insiders are more legit than the guy who uh, dresses up in a cute little mask and tells you to uh, always uh, stay angry. Uh, here we go. Overseas, the completion rate was significantly better, but at 45%, less than half of all viewers were compelled to complete Amazon's Middle Earth Adventure, right? So again, so again, overseas, the numbers were better, but the numbers weren't really better by, by that much. It wasn't that significant. Um, IndieWire has reached out to a representative of, Am of Amazon Studios for comment. Of course, Amazon is not going to comment and say, oh, yeah, this is all legitimate. <laughs> and even if Amazon were to come out and refute it, where it's like, oh, this isn't true, blah, 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 it might get it might give this report that much more credibility. So Amazon's kind of in a lose lose scenario, right? Uh, admittedly, it's hard to say for uh, it's hard to say for certain how these completion rates compare to other shows at Amazon or otherwise. The streamers that do release viewership metrics never share completion rates for their titles, so success is measured by the raw amount of hours audiences watch the show, even if, if you only tune in for two minutes. That said, according to the Hollywood Reporter, insiders at Amazon claimed a 50% completion rate would be viewed as a quote unquote solid but not spectacular result for an original. And here is the problem with streaming ratings. Right is that success is measured by the raw amount of hours audiences watch the show, even if a few only tuned in for two minutes. So if you only watch two minutes of a three-hour movie, like let's say you know you watch, let's say you only watch two minutes of The Irishman and found it to be incredibly boring and shut it off, Netflix considers that Netflix considers that as a view. Right? How many people were coming out? And saying with with uh, the rings of power that they shut it off after the first twenty minutes just out of sheer boredom, and then you you add in you you add in the fact that Amazon themselves were basically banning user reviews for seventy two hours to quote unquote prevent review bombing. So how many people just simply moved on from the show after that? It's like, well, I'm not going to I'm not going to sit here, cry, bitch and moan and, you know, pull a geeks and gamers or a nerd rotic and generate a bunch of a bunch of faux outrage. I'm simply just going to turn the channel and and watch something else. And, you know, you know, Scott Steiner has a uh, has a has a point when he uh, when, when he says this. The numbers don't lie. And they spell disaster for you. Right? It's one thing if people are bitching and complaining about on the internet, you always have the point of, yeah, but you're still watching the show anyway, so sit down and shut the fuck up. Well, 
now we have the numbers to basically prove that the overwhelming majority um, basically just shut off the show and uh, and moved on. Um, but while the show managed to make it to number 15 on the Nielsen's end, end, end of year list of top streaming original shows, it also had a slightly meter reaction from audiences on social media. It was completely overshadowed by House of the Dragon, which attracted significantly more online conversation. Excuse me. According to Parrot Analytics, the show was also largely ignored by award bodies this year. House of the Dragon, meanwhile, managed a Golden Globe win for, be for, for Best Drama Original Series. The revelation of Rings of Power's completion rate comes as part of a broader story from The Hollywood Reporter about Amazon Studios' struggle to produce a breakout defining hit for the Prime Video streamer. Sources quote in the story shared frustrations regarding perceived poor decision making and lack of vision from, stu from studio head Jennifer Salk and head of television Ver Vernon Sanders. But still, you know, the, 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 here's, a, here's a good point right here. Rings of Power was completely overshadowed by House of the Dragon, which for all intents and purposes, House of the Dragon should have all also been a failure given how badly season eight of game of thrones was received and on top of that you have the comments that were being made by uh by uh by steve uh, by steve to saint and guys i'm gonna go ahead and pause the recording real quick because i need to find those comments and what steve to saint said word for word so for me it's gonna take a couple of minutes but for you it's gonna be just about a couple of milliseconds Okay, I found the I, I found I found the one I I found the comments I was looking for. This article from Variety back in August of 2022. House of the Dragon star Steve Toussaint slams racist viewers. They're happy with a dragon flying, but not a rich black guy. Uh, here we go. Quote: It seems to be very hard for people to swallow Toussaint's in an interview with Men's Health. They are happy with a dragon flying. They're happy with white hair and violet colored eyes, but a rich black guy? That's be that's beyond the pale. Uh, and he continues on. What has been wonderful is for every toxic person that has somehow found their way into my timeline, there have been so many others who have been so supportive. Men like, oh my God, I can't wait. This is going to be great. To Saint added, even when we were doing certain scenes, there would be supporting artists who would come up and go, it's great to have the, it's great to have this representation. So for all intents and purposes, with with Game of Thrones season eight bombing. And Steve Toussaint's comments, you know, coming out and, and slamming the quote unquote racists, you know, there might there might have been some people that that were genuinely racist or, towards uh, Steve Toussaint. But how much of it was was just, you know, what was the was the perceived agenda behind his casting? But still, you know, I, and I know I'm 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 kind of talking in circles, so I'll, so I'll, I'll get I'll get back. I'll get back on point. Right, House of the Dragon should have largely been ignored in the same vein as Lord of the Rings, Rings of Power, but no, it actually turned out to be a massive hit because HBO did not come out and pull an Amazon and bar user reviews for 72 hours and basically come out and say and 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 put up and put up this like no hate watching allowed sign on top on top of their treehouse all of the um all of the all of the the the, uh, the the little rascals you know I could I couldn't think of it for a second but but still you know you know this is you know this is really really bad for Amazon and and I want to end off this segment with with this line from Scott Steiner once again just to hammer this point home. The numbers don't lie and they spell disaster for you. Exactly. The numbers don't lie and they spell disaster for Amazon with regard to the rings of power. And guys, I'm gonna go ahead and end this week's TMRP right here. Uh, if you stuck around this long and you watched all of the segments, thanks so much for doing so. And if you've been following long enough, you know I'm terrible at ending these videos and ending this podcast series so far. I've done, you know, this is now my my third episode that, that I've done and I still don't have a butt fucking ending for these. So I'll just see you guys uh, next time.